What I really like about working on the platform is we have a whole lot of bunch of people associated with the platform and it gives me the opportunity to talk to and engage with people who I respect and I think are solid New Zealanders. And one of those who is one of our guest presenters is Tina Nixon. She dropped me a very short column yesterday, uh, which we're getting up on uh, the opinion section on the website and on the app today. And it is a very short column, but it is completely a, a column that speaks in a completely different language than the report I've just been discussing with Ming Foon. And kind of I wanted to get Tina on the show today to talk about this column, where it came from and where she's coming from. Tina, uh, nice to have you with us. You're down in Christchurch. Yeah, I am. I'm actually here for a meeting with Naito. Okay, so you're doing <laughs> doing your stuff. And not that it matters, <laughs> Tina, but people don't realise you're, you're part you're Māori or part Māori or you're whatever, you're yeah, a Kiwi, aren't yeah. you? Yeah, yep. Yes, I am, um, and um, and proudly to be appointed to um, a couple of Naitahu committees, yeah. um, one of which is today. Yeah. One thing I'd like to say about this, the reports is I never went to university, but um, I always understood that uh, you have to, um, if you if you're going to do some some investigation, then you have to you have to bring to light all of the information that you had during that investigation. And we've often seen, even with the Three Waters report um, and some of the, um, when they put a working committee together to have a look at Three Waters, some of them disagreed and they put up a minority report. And at the very least, that's what the Human, Relation, the Human Rights Commission should have done. Um, but they all agree on the Human Rights Commission. The dissenting, they, 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 no, there should have been the dissenting voice listened to and acknowledged no matter how fiery how wrong how how whatever people thought it was that voice needed to be heard and um they it's a travesty that they haven't allowed that and will not allow that now, in future and, and, yeah um and i was thinking about um this yesterday when i was sitting in the quarry lounge which is um uh, which is why I wrote the column, really. A and uh, it just came to me as I was sort of sitting there and I started to look around. And I really haven't been in the Koori Lounge and, and thought too much about much um, for probably 10 years. I've been in and out occasionally, but, you know, very quickly. Yep. Yesterday I was in there for four hours. And I was I, I looked around and I thought, wow, this is different. Um, for 10 years ago, everyone either was a power dressing woman or a suited up bloke and they were predominantly white. And if you were Māori, they tended to have their own spaces and they pretty much all sat together and you knew who they were. So, so you were saying, so Māori people said, oh, there's another Māori person, I'll go and talk to them because this really isn't my zone. Yeah, and, they, and, and there were so few of them that they all knew each other because that brown bureaucracy was quite thin in those days. Um, even 10 years ago. Yesterday was an absolute revelation. It made me smile, and smile in a good way, because it was incredibly homogenous. As I walked in, there was a singleted, jandal-wearing um, Māori guy who I, I suspect was an artist, um, and I sort of had a, he sort of had a familiar face. Yeah. And, and, I, and that was the first thing, and I thought, oh, the dress code's changed. Um, and, and, and then I started to really have a look around. Then I actually walked around four times during that, that, that time yeah. I was here, and it was very, very brown and white. It wasn't the old just white with a few sprinkles, um, brown sprinkles, chocolate sprinkles in there. It was completely different. And I thought... Yeah, so hang on, we've actually come a hell of a long way in 10 years. Now, I take Moon's, uh, no, uh, Ming's point that there is some, still some pockets in society where if you're a brown person in a job and a white person in a job, sorry, the brown person's not going to get paid as much, and we have to fix that. But the reality is, is we have come a long way, and I, I think as a, as, as a nation, we have a collective voice that drowns out the ugly, nasty dissenters anyway, and that we're all trying to get to a better society. And yesterday, the Koori Lounge was literally a picture of what New Zealand had become in that business. If you could afford it, Tina, no poor people in there. 
Well, that's me. well, yeah, probably me because I can't afford to have a cor- at the yep. Cory Lounge Park. It's just that I've travelled just enough to retain the silver yep. and, and membership. Oh, and silver? Two I'm passes. not even silver. Two, pa- two nice. passes, yeah. two passes a year. Wow. And yesterday I thought, well, I'm definitely going to make use of it today because I'm in town. I'm going to be here for a long time. But you know, it was really good. The downside was every everyone who's, who is, was a wake person in there were brown. Yeah. Um, and mainly, um, they were um, obviously immigrants. Um, so um, some of them had English as a second language. Um, yeah. And I was quite surprised that... Um, uh, and, and that was probably the only downside. And I thought, yeah, there is, there is, there is some... There are, we still, as a country and as a world, we still have some problems. Yeah. There is absolutely no doubt about that. But yeah. a Truth and Reconciliation Com- a, a Commission... It would it means wrong. It's going to cost millions, if not tens of millions, to do one of those commissions, and it'll just be a big sook fest that takes us nowhere. Which is exactly so what I he confirmed think, today. It's not even going to reconcile anything. It's just for people to say, "People, someone was yeah. mean to me." Yeah, well, give the Catholic Church and put everyone on a confession box, you know, and give them some money and put everyone on a confession box and they can tell everyone what they think. Yeah. I don't think that's going to take us any further. The other really disturbing thing I, I, I noticed yesterday was there was a group of um, obvious public servants, and a couple of them were Māori, and they were talking quite loudly, um, as some people are want to do in the Koori Lounge, and um, they were talking, obviously, about Māori disparity, which um, I was winging on. Yeah. And, and then I thought... <laughs> that they were sitting there in their privileged position, probably doing work that had absolutely no impact on people's lives, their housing or education or anything else, because actually public servants don't really change a lot of that stuff, in a privileged position, and they didn't even understand that while they were, were, were sitting there gas-bagging about how badly Māori were doing. Yeah. And it was just, it was just, it was just a, yeah. it was just a moment in time, and I felt like going over to them and saying, "Get your asses out of here and get out into the provinces yeah. and out into the and, and into the places where the hurt's really happening and fix it. You're okay. not going to fix it sitting." And they were there for three hours, yeah. you know. And I thought, how come a public servant sitting in a bloody um, Koori lounge for three hours, pontificating, not doing anything? Yeah. And, and, and that's that's the other side of all of this question. It's being driven by the public service pontification about stuff that is not about the real nuts and bolts that will change our society. Okay, so you look at this this Human Rights Commission, call these reports, um, but he says, Waste oh, it's, uh, but no, it's the United Nations deadline that we've got. I don't care. It's a waste of time. You know, and and I don't think the problem's as big as, as they're making it. And if and and, and I, as I said, I don't think it has any academic integrity. If you yeah. go in and do an investigation and go, oh yeah, we found all that stuff. We're not going to even worry about that. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and Shane, like look, we had Shane Jones. Trial, yeah, we had Shane Jones on yesterday. You've had him on when you've been on the platform, and he said this is rubbish, and these guys need to resign. But I guess they're yeah. on a gravy train, aren't they, Tina? I don't know if no, Ming will be on four hundred grand I, I, a, a year. Yeah, here's this, here is this pom coming over to tell us, like the colonialists did, colonialist did in the eighteen hundreds, about how we should run our country. Well, we're just repeating what we did in the eighteen hundreds, <laughs> and don't they? They don't don't know any. They do, they don't know better than us. They never did. Would you agree that these plans are radical, and these reports are radical and written by radicals? I think they're radical, but I think more to the point, they're unsound, and 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 um, and, and they're not going to achieve anything. They are not going to make our world a better place getting out and fixing stuff and stop swanning around in Wellington pretending you, you, you're helping people on your $150,000, $200,000 salaries. I am really sorry. That is not the way to help people. And spending $10 million, which will probably be where it will end up, on a Truth and Reconciliation com- Committee for everyone to be in an echo, ch- echo chamber and half of, them, half of the voices will never be heard anyway, is not going to take us anywhere. Yep. What's going to take us anywhere is some of the work that men's, men's doing about the recidivist people out there in the community who are truly racist and are uh, and, and, and imposing racist policies in the workplace, yep. and they're fixing them. Oh, they're, pretty easy to, they're pretty easy to spot, aren't they? Your true white they supremacist sticks out like a, like a, a swastika, you know? Yep.
<laughs> yep, it sure does. Hey, Tina, always yeah. good chatting. Um, we'll have you back on then. Thank you very much. And it's a good column. It's nice and punchy. Nice and punchy. It's, um, it's like a radio column. Yeah. It's a radio column where we're always taught to write, uh, Sean, you know, the yeah. one, was it one, one minute thirties? <laughs> hey, um... <laughs> Lovely talking to you. Thank you very much indeed. That is Tina Nixon um, down doing some work for Naitahu. Um, Yeah, rubbish. Rubbish. But of course it'll get reported through the Public Interest Journalism Fund and your tax dollars will go on this. Now, I've got a world of text here to get through. But if you've heard the interview with Ming Fing that I know was long, but I think it was worth asking the questions, what are your thoughts on what you heard?